Guys, this is Farm with Probox to Respect TKO. Um, I'm back at the Lesson's Gym in Romford with Freddie Turner. Freddie, what's happening, buddy? All right? All well, mate. Yeah, we're a bit tired yeah. today. Just come out of the gym from Jimmy Tibbs, going over to me, sir. Yeah. I'm all right, yeah. How was Jimmy? Jimmy's well. Jimmy's well. Uh, I'm honoured, whatever my boxing career does, whether I do something or I don't, I'd be very honoured to say I'll train with Jimmy Tibbs. You know, there's not many fighters that, that have mixed with Jimmy Tibbs for a long period of time. He only takes good fighters on, and uh, just to be in his catchment and hear his stories is a, uh, yeah, it's an honour. It's wonderful, yeah. He's, yeah, he's got, um, he's, he's obviously uh, world renowned as a trainer, yeah. and even before that, a bit of a colourful past, which is, you know. When you think about it, look, you, Jimmy Tibbs has been, from a kid, he was, he was a good schoolboy amateur at West Ham. Yeah. And he's seen the box, you know what I mean, close to being an Olympian, then turn pro. You're talking like, that's a, that's a lifespan of a career. Yes. There's not many people who have done that with one sole thing. You know yeah. what I mean? And he's had his, like, you know, he's had his colourful past and that, so he's had a big break in it, but he's still come back to boxing and still made it work and become, like you say, a world renowned trainer. So, yeah. yeah, to be mixed with Jimmy Tibbs, I mean, his book, I've mentioned his book. That's fantastic. That's He's a legend. Black and, white. I'm in there. and and the nice part, but mate, is whenever you meet Jimmy and even his son Mark, they're very humble guys, oh, very Mark, straight. Both straight. That's what I like about Mark and Jimmy. They're straight people. <laughs> what you see is what you get. There's no snaking. There's no behind the scenes. They are straight. You know what I mean? Whatever they're thinking, they let you know. I mean, yeah. Me and Jimmy, I've been Jimmy with Jimmy since I was 16. We had a little break because we had disagreement. You know, I. I I was a bit strong and didn't, didn't listen to Jimmy and, and, and I was telling him fibs what I was doing with training. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Jimmy let me have it, mate. He said, I wasted my time with you, you know, doing what I'm saying. And Jimmy did fuck me off for a few years and then uh, done me out with a bit and I turned pro with another trainer. But we, we, if you're a good fighter and you know what you're doing, it's not I'm not great, but a good fighter, you listen, you know good advice. You yeah. know? And I've had people tell me things and I think, no, you ain't right, you, you know, that don't seem to fit. With Jimmy, what he says, because he's a good trainer and I'm a good fighter, I know it. Yeah, I trust him, Jimmy. You know, he says it and it's right. Simple, simple stuff. That's why we click. You know, I'm honoured to be with him and, and I'm going to finish my career with him to, it, along with doing something good, you know. And that's good to hear, mate. God bless you. Yeah. And, mate, listen, training like that, you can't hoodwink. So, what even I, that's it. What I say is, <laughs> if you ain't going to make it with Jimmy Tibbs, then you probably ain't going to make it. The, the yeah. problems you've got with you as a fighter, not with Jimmy, you know. Cause, as much as Jimmy's got an old exterior and he's a rough, tough fella, and he, you know what I mean, Jimmy does bend, you know what I'm saying? He, of course he does. He bends with every fighter. Some, every fighter's different. Some fighters have weight issues, some fighters have commitment issues, but he, will, he won't say, oh yeah, you know, it'll work. He will bend with you and he'll make it right. Jimmy's a very, very adaptable trainer, that's what I like about him. Yeah. And he's obviously he's experienced and one of the greatest, you know? Yeah, exactly, and, and Mark's doing well in his own right as Mark well. Is just, you know, you've got to remember, look, Mark's been in an asshole as a little baby. He Absolutely. Up with it. I was talking to Jimmy earlier, telling me stories when he was training Mark when he was a little kid and that. So you, when you mix with that kind of people, well, Mark was a very good fighter. And Mark was a very, very good fighter. Watch him fight. Yeah. He was a crisp, good fighter. He could have done a lot more than what he'd done because the dad and, and, and some relations, sometimes it doesn't work. Some people sure. some people don't. With them two, it seems to not work. And they still have their struggles now, but they are a good unit. And, and, and Mark is making a statement in boxing there. He's got Dylan White, you know what I mean? Sam McNess has got a few. Sam McNess is going to be a good fighter. Yeah. The minute he's just learning, yeah. he's just a kid, you know? Yeah. And he's not just Sam McNess, he's got a good statement. You go down there, he's got five or six capable fighters. They all could do something, you know? I saw Sam fight at um, uh, Frank Warren Promotions in uh, Harrow, Lazarus, yeah. uh, in uh, October. It was a good so, performance. I, I can judge. People around that way, I do mix with Sam, you know what I mean? Now, yeah. I know people give me trouble, people don't. What I like about Sam is he, he's a good learner, you know what I mean? Sometimes I'll spar him and I'll, I'll leave him shots quite comfortable. And the next time, he's adapted quick. I won't get any shots, you know yeah. what I mean? Quick learner. If I'm taking three years to get going, he's quick. And I like that. He's a really nice boy as well, very humble and a good learner. Do well. You have to quick learn, don't you, mate? Because nobody wants to be hit with the same shots over and over again. Yeah, fighters, you know what I mean? Some fighters, I've sparred fighters and I've hit the shots, crack, and I think, oh, I wonder if I get that again, crack. And I think, how many times are you going to take it to the button before you steady up? And sometimes yeah. they do it all the time. You yeah. know, good fighters, they learn quick, and he's a good fighter. Where's your main uh, training base? Is it at Peacocks? Yeah, we're at, me personally, I don't mind. Listen, I'll train out in the car park, I'll train in the woods, I don't bother me. Not sure. I've got Jimmy there. Yeah. I don't care, you know what I mean? So at the minute Jimmy's a peacock, we're there. Uh, everyone knows Peacock, he's one of the 
it's, it's a common style of boxing. Say. You know what I mean? Every good fight has been from there. And the lovely yeah. thing with Bowers is it could never do enough for you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You go in there, they're always quite pleasant. What a conversation, they want to help you. They're good people, good boxing people. So we're there, but then when we need sparring, we might look about for sparring. You know what I mean? It was tailor made for us because Jimmy knows what he's doing. Remember Jimmy says, I listen and uh, we go where we've got to go. You know, the guys, yeah, exactly. And they've got World War connections, you know, MGM as well in Marbella. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there's loads of good people who would help out. Mate, one of the things I think I'll ask you off, off camera, well, I did, is that you don't actually have a nickname. So uh, yeah. maybe, uh, maybe Jimmy and Mark can come up with a new nickname. See, I think if you've got to push a nickname, then it ain't really thing. Someone might, I mean, as I said to you, Freddie's not a real name, my name is Luke, Freddie was a nickname. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, a nickname will do so much, but if you could, that, that does talking, you know what I mean? If yeah. you can get in there and do the business, then that's good enough, you know? Yeah. No point having a catchy uh, nickname and no, then you can't, can't do the business. Yeah, yeah. it's not good. You know? <laughs> so oh, there he goes, there he goes, slip out of the stretch up. And you've got to be able to fight. Mate, um, I know this, but. Um, just for the viewers, uh, what's, uh, what's the weight you fight at now? I fight a lot of middle. I mean, I, I started my pro career as a welder. Uh, I, feel, I mean, I make, I make like, like really very comfortable. I've been, when I remember I was an amateur, I was a, I was a good amateur. I wasn't a great amateur, I was a good amateur. I, I went on the school boys, done a lot of junior ABAs, had a good senior career. But as an amateur, I remember being in the school boys' hand. I remember not, not eating for two or three days, and that was normal, wasn't it? Yeah. People think that, that they say, oh, for two or three days, that's, that's, that's ill, that's crazy, but, and you're training, and you, but that was normal, you know right. what I mean? And I can remember being on scales, and I was bone dry, and I had a drink, and I could feel it go down my body, you know what I mean? Like, a, and I felt it hurt me, that's like, I remember telling my mum, and she said, look, no more dying, you know what I mean? My mum's a good, my mum's a good, always been a good cornerstone for me. We don't get on sometimes, some of them do get on, but... That's families, isn't it? Yeah, that's family. But my mum is a very wise woman, you know, and she said, look, no more weight making bollocks, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to stunt your growth. As a kid, you're growing, you know what I mean? Yes. Boxing aside, you're growing, you know what I mean? So you're better off growing. And I've found, as a lot of people, I might not be the biggest, but after six rounds, when they, they have killed themselves to make the weight, and they start going, well, I've got loads in the tank, I can keep going, I can do 10, 12, quite comfortable, you know? Because... Yeah. I eat clean and I train hard and this is my way. I can take anything else off you. Don't need any more for me. Good. Be detrimental to my progress, you know, so like middle as well, I'll be like finish my career. You sometimes hear like middle, super well to weight. Yeah, it's it's just a fact, you know. It's, yeah. it's, it's, so, when I talked to Jimmy, when Jimmy was in pro, there wasn't no super middle and then like middle, it was just the set weight. You had to get, you could get there and you give a load of weight away. Yeah. That's what Jimmy would say his problem was. He said, look, I weren't he said, I think it was light heavy to fight. He said, I weren't light heavy, it was super middle. It was even lighter than the middle. Yeah. So what you do? You give loads of weight away, which is all right if they can't fight, they can in trouble, or kill yourself, and then they're going to get you late anyway. So it's a funny old game, but a minute, super well up, light middle, whatever it is. 154 you know. pounds. Yeah. What's your, um, don't, without being personal, what sort of, what's your walking weight, you know, when you're walking around? Yeah, so you're right. I mean, I'll never go any higher than I'd say 11, 10, 10 pounds, but that's, that, that's okay. even if I want to train you. Yeah. Because I'm, I've got an active, outside of boxing, if I want a boxer, I always tell people this, it always bamboos me how people get unhealthy. Because you, your body's the greatest tool you can own, you know? Yeah. It's for free, you've got it, it's, it's an amazing tool. Why would you want to destroy it being fat and heavy? And so I always like to live clean. Like, I need to take that then. Sometimes, I've got, <laughs> sometimes I've got a body, my mum's a person, say, oh, you're fat, <laughs> get a bit lumpy there, do say, oh, she's right. So I always say slim, and it's easier. If you've got, a, say you get a date and you're a fighter, you're a good fighter, yeah. you're well overweight, You've got to do three, four weeks to make your weight. Then the, the, you're, you're rushing to get the fight plan right. Yes. I'd rather go to the gym, have two or three weeks with Jimmy, touching things up, and then he, he, he can implement a fight plan. I'm not worried about weight. Jimmy yeah. tells me to put weight on for sparring to hold the sparring partners off. Well, I suppose a good example is that um, where uh, uh, Deontay Wilder's fight's uh, fallen through, and now, last minute, uh, Gerald Washington, yeah. who's jumped in. Jumped in, yeah. So yeah. he's obviously he's training he's to keep him fit. Like, that's what, that's what yeah. happened, you know, look. I mean, in my pro career, I've not had a lot of great touches, you know, and I've always thought, if I stay in good shape, somewhere along the line, a good big fight might have fought through. Yeah. You know, this hard, I'm not shy. I always believe if you're good enough, get in there. It, obviously, if, you've got, if, you, if, you, if you're active, get in there. So if, if it happens, and I'm around the weight, then yeah, I think you're shy, I'm a week to camp or whatever. You yeah. know, if you're, if, you're, if you're a pro, be a pro. Don't be part-time. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. a pro, so. Good, I'm part -time good. Clean, yeah. Well, at the moment, mate, you got a fantastic record at pro level, mm -hmm. uh, eleven and one with the yeah. solitary defeat. What about as an amateur? 
as an amateur, so as an amateur, I can remember pimping candle bags up to about 45, 50 fights, but then after that, you, you kind of lose track and it's all about what you're doing. I remember I, I was roughly around the under marks, like a lot of amateur fights. Right. A very busy amateur career. When I, when, I, when I went into an amateur gym, back then it was you boxed every Friday, you know, win or lose, and I had a good amateur career. I remember I went amateur, when I was first in the gym, I was very physical, even the squad, so I went boxing. I was always rough and tough and getting in trouble. And everyone thought, go down to boxing, you get beat up and that's straight. And I went down there. There was an old boy who passed away actually. And he, the first night, he took me out of the car park and said to my mum, uh, This boy will turn pro, he'll do something. Make sure he always comes to the gym. That was the first day. I was very tough. I wanted to win, I wanted to learn. I, I ain't getting beat. If we walk down the street with someone yeah. and they fight, I want to beat them. I've got a will to win like no other. I want to win no matter what it is. I, and it's, it's always kept in me. So you had a good amateur career, I won a few school boys, a few NABC. I was always in a mixture of top lads, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, been on a few England camps, won a few Four Nations and that. As a senior, I've done okay. Yeah, I boxed, I boxed Frankie Gavin and uh, I was only young at the time, 17, and he, he was on a good run then, you know, he, he was yeah. a world champion just before the world champion. And he was pretty untouchable. In the ABA, I remember reading it thinking he was beating people 12 nil, 11 nil. They weren't going to punch him. I was a pro and I always struggled a little bit down to live it, not down to the ability, down to live it. Yes. As an amateur, he was slick. He yeah. was the master of distance. I remember boxing right. I ain't gonna wanna I ain't gonna hit you, Frankie, but you ain't gonna hit me. And for a round or two, I remember him getting the pox. Slip, 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 he's thinking like this kid, I can't get him, you know? Yeah. I could feel him feeling moaning the breath, why don't you fight? I was thinking, well you ain't getting me. So that's what Jimmy used to say. Jimmy said, if you can't hit him, don't let them hit you. And it worked. And the, the fight was tight, don't get me wrong, we beat him. Handling, but he was tight, a seven year old kid was tight. And then, uh, yeah, I, I carried on with all my amateur career. I boxed, I boxed Bradley Ski as an amateur, he was my last defeat as an amateur. And that's when Jimmy fell out over Bradley. I mean, Bradley was here right there, he'd tell you. I remember, I remember being Bradley, he was down in England with the squad, and he was always a bit bigger than me. And they said, Do you want to spar Bradley? I said, Yeah, I'll have a little go. I remean, was fine. I remember beating, he'd tell you himself, I beat the life out of Bradley. And I thought, because everyone, I remember he was, he was a good amateur, good amateur. Yeah. And I, I, I thought, come on, he's fucking useless. And then they pulled the spar a bit early, and I thought, right, yeah, no, I was struggling with the weight, but I'm going up to weight, and I'm going to beat Bradley. And as we come to it, I, I, I overlooked all the people. I was looking at other fighters up north, you know, he's going to do, 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 do. And on the day, on the day, he thought saying, he, he did. That's what, you know what, that's what I say, Bradley, he always brings saying, never write that kid off, he always brings saying yeah. on the day, you know. And on that day, he was a bit special. And I, I hope I placed it. It was tight, he did win it, but that was my last loss in amateur. And after that, I tried to get back in the, in the, in, in the top set of England and, and try to think about Commonwealths and that, but I, I was with Jimmy for a long time, you know, and I lost, I lost Jimmy over that fight because I should have beat Bradley. Everyone was saying it's going to be an easy win, but I, was, I, I weren't training properly. I was, you know what I mean? I was a young yeah, kid. Yeah, I'd started a job, I had a little girl in the firm, and I thought, yeah, you know, I'm boxing here. I'm just, I was playing at it. And that was a big learning curve for me. I thought, right, if you, if you do it properly, or fuck it off. Isn't it funny how when you start getting talking, mate, with most boxers, mm. all these little names, and they're not little names, but you know, yeah, it's, it's the names in the industry. I can remember being like, I mean, being in, 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 the, um, in, in an amateur. Yeah. George Grove walking about, you know what I mean? James Gale walking about, but they, they were just kids there, you know what I mean? They were, we all had the same dream. Yes. Some of us have made it, some of us are still chasing that dream. Yes. But they all had the dream, you yeah. know what I mean? And then to. I can remember James the girl getting beat by, by a better fighter sometimes. Because he's got that bit of steel and he's stuck at it, he's had back second, we've all had it. Listen, yes. I've had, I know my problems that I've had and, and my setbacks, but we don't know James the girl or George Grove, but they've had them, you know yeah. what I mean? And they've stuck to it, they've kept going, that's what's made with the fighters. Same yeah, tool, just fighters. perseverance, isn't it? Perseverance. I, I spoke to, um, I interviewed uh, Johnny Oliver mm. a couple of weeks ago. And as you know, they, yeah. he's, he's had a lot of dealings with those guys as well. Yeah. Took them out to Vegas, so yeah. you know, loads of, loads of good uh, good events, mate. Um, talking about Bradley Skeets and those guys, they obviously they are on some main events. Mm. For me, I noticed that almost like a second home is your call for you. Um, yeah. You're obviously taking a more of a sort of a subdued. I take, so what's happened with me? I'm taking. I'm my boxing career as a pro as a very. As a massive lack of any kind of uh, structure or not down to training. If you ask Jimmy, he would say, Who's one of the best trainers in Freddie? If anything, he goes too. Jimmy, I remember when I boxed for a southern area, we were getting ready. I only done one eight round spar for that because I was so fit. 
Yeah. We lay a couple of weeks out, and Jimmy said, have a week off. And I thought, we don't know what to talk about. A week off training, I've got two weeks to go. I should be going for it. Yeah. And everyone, everyone was asking, where's Freddie and Jimmy? Jimmy said, give him a week off. And they thought, oh, he's fucking, he's got me all his game or whatever. <laughs> and on that night, I ended up back in the ring. I, done, got, I think he got a British fight of the year or something like that. It was a good fight. He went down, I went down, yeah. I went down heavy as well. And just down to my conditioning, where I had that week off, I didn't go over the top, Jimmy Tibbs knew what he was doing, and I, I held it back. When I went to the dressing room, I thought, I could do another 10 minutes, yeah, I should let it go, I probably would have stopped him. You know, that's down to experience and conditioning. Yeah. Other trainers said, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm not on the flat, you yeah. know? But um, that's all my career was had, no structure, management-wise. I've had, I was with Johnny Hughes for a long time. Johnny Hughes is a, is a, is a, is a gentleman of sport, a nice Absolutely. Player. Johnny's had a lot of bad luck, you know what I mean? Don't yeah. get me wrong, some of it's his own fault, but he's had a bad luck. Some things have worked out for him, some things have happened, you know? And I stuck with Johnny for a long time, but I, 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 listen, I'm not a flash person, you know what I mean? If I get it wrong and I get bashed up in the fights, that's down to me. I've got some good criticism. But I know on my day, a British level, there's not many fights that that would stay with me. Not, I'm not a big puncher, but I'm a good, crisp boxer. I'm a slick boxer, I yeah. set traps, I make the miss, and I clip you, you know? Yeah. That's my game. I'm very good. I mean, I spar Billy Joe, and he's not bigger than me, but I, I can not match him at all, but I can stay with him and be in that zone. And he's an elite, we're talking about fighting Golovkin, we're talking about fighting Canelo. You know? Oh yeah, he's an elite fighter, he's slick. Him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's a proper fight, he wouldn't blow me away, but I'd still be in there, you know? So, yeah. And, but, and people, when, they, when they're commenting outside of boxing, don't realise, I mean, as I mentioned to you in Johnny Eames' yeah. uh, gym, I used to train with Darren Hamilton, and you would see uh, Billy in with uh, yeah. Jimmy Tibbs and stuff, and he's he's superb. See, Unless you see him up close, yeah, mate. A lot of people, a lot of people only see. Look, Billy Joe hasn't looked good for a long time. I mean, last good fight was Andy Lee, and he got that right. Then. You know yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Tactics banging. Ain't, 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 uh, ain't a devastatingly great fighter, but he's a good fighter. He's been to America. Big he's, punch. Yeah, he's a big puncher. You've got to watch yeah. out for him, you know. And, uh, and Joe Beat played his game and cheated him. Yeah. You know? But Billy Joe, I mean, uh, yeah, people don't see the fights. You see him in the gym. He's not a gym fighter. He can do it at night, but he's got a lot going on in his life and stuff, things like that. But uh, yeah, he, he's a special, special talent. He, 100%. Not really killed for that talent, you know? Well, for that talent. hopefully you'll be involved in a few big he fights this year. There's no doubt about it. Same yeah. thing. He's a, you know what as well, he's a youth on his side. And I, I mean, I'm a little bit older, not much older than John, but as you grow older, you start to realise, I've got to get going now. Yeah. I need to, you know what I mean? You start thinking, I've got to start cutting things out. But before, you thought it was all right. You can get away with it. Get yeah. out your mates, you get away with it. But then as you get older, you can't. Because the elite ain't doing it. Lofkin ain't out drinking. Mate. Let's face it, mate. He's got yeah, he's got a title as well, which a uh, few of them want. So uh... well, of course, he's in a good position. He's, good, he's in a good money position. He's in a good stature position to fight. So he, he can capitalise on it if he gets himself right. You know? Exactly. But he's doing the right thing, mate. Uh, very very quickly, your last fight with Chris Agadur. Yeah, Chris Agadur. Yeah, yeah, Is there potential for you guys to have a, a do it number three again further down the line? Or you know, Chris is a Listen, Chris is a very good person. He's a very good, honest pro, you know. And we had the first fight. I overlooked Chris a bit. You know, I've seen bits of him, you know. He, he had come from amateur background, he's come from a license background. I overlooked him a little bit. Yeah. And I didn't perform too well, but I still won the fight and there, you know. And in the second fight, I thought, well, I'm going to make a statement here, and I'm going to bust him up. And I, but I was thinking to myself, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, everyone who said, see that fight said, why didn't you stop him? Because I ain't even a good shot. It, we started early, he walked onto a good punch and he was all at sea. Yeah. You know, I commend him for getting up for that fight. I remember looking at the corner on the floor and he was, he was shattered. I thought, right, you ain't getting up. And he suddenly went snapped into life. That's his will to win. He's got a lot of will to win, that boy. Yeah. He got up, and, but he was all wobbly. I, I chased him around, I was clipping him, and I thought, I was thinking to myself, right, finish him. I thought, no, I will not. They'll not be in order. If, you, if you're fighting, you've got a nasty streak. Right? Of that's course. Of course. Yeah, and I thought, right, I'm going to punish you. I want your corner to pull you out, I want you to say that I'm done. You know what I mean? Or I want you to be just done. That's what I want you to do. So I thought I'm gonna keep punishing, keep punishing me. Obviously the injury happened to the knee. And uh, I know, and I'm happy Chris becomes our new champion, because that's been yeah. a dream we wanted it. That's nice of you, bud, yeah. It's good to have that. And people say, you know what I mean, it's hollow win, one of the injury, but listen, he took some he took some punches that round, he did give in, yeah. for the, he, he was ready the next round to come out, you know what I mean? No work, I need give in, you know what I'm saying? Sure. The fight. Mate, it's nice to hear because you know, it's sim similar to the weekend, Frampton versus Santa Cruz. Mm. It's nice for Frampton to own up. If you, if you don't struggle with yourself, 
Yeah. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna keep going. You're gonna exactly. lose, you know. And I'm strike up. Maybe the fight Chris again ain't really worth. Not, not worth. If there was money involved, the good money, then yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. But I want to go further now. You know what I mean? My clock sure. is running down now. You know, I'm not old. I'm only twenty. But my clock is running down. You know, I don't think I could go on to thirty five because I'm a good liver. Yeah. But I don't want that. I don't want to be knocked up, smashed up. You know what I'm saying? I want to give British champions. So I'm saying to my kids, your dad's a British champion, you know. Say to tell them that I was a British champion. Jimmy T, I want to say, Jimmy, look, we've done it. You know what I mean? Sure. We've come to our 16, we've become British champion. And Chris is at his level now, so I want to move on. If I don't make it, I've got to go. If I do make it, pucker. Okay. Whereas you're looking at further field. So, up there, you know? so is there any, um, Freddie, is there any people that you've got sort of in mind, to, or you and the team, that you're sort of All going... All in mind, look, I mean, I've never, I've never, I've been a pro, I've been a pro seven years, I've been six, seven years, it's a long yeah. time. I've had 12 yeah. fights, sometimes I've had a fight a year, you know what I mean, and I've never given up. Most people in my position would have said, box, you know, I'm moving off, you know what I mean, I've had England, I've had problems, I've had times when I don't fuck the money for boxing. Boxing always been loads of them, right? I don't sure. know money yet. But I want to win. I started with that thing and I ain't. When the body says I've had enough or I can't go on in here, that's done. Oh, they're better fighters out there. Yeah. Yeah. I know and Jimmy knows. Jimmy, if Jimmy's honest, if Jimmy said you can't do it, I'd say Jimmy, you're right, mate. We're good mates and we just carry on like that. But Jimmy says if you think you're free, you can do something. You know what I mean? And I know I can. Right now, I've just got a little thing going with, with um, what was it, MGM, they've changed their name. MKT, I think it's called. Uh, yeah, MTK. They've, I went out there spawned Billy Joe, that's how it all started. Okay. Well, funny enough, we were trying to get something going on, but I'm a very busy person, I'm terrible with mobile phone. We kept missing calls and missing, and they're busy. Was that ahead of his uh, fight in Glasgow or after? That, that, was, that was before his fight. Before that, we, we were trying to get a deal going with MGM at the time. We yeah. kept falling through with various things, and uh, listen, they don't want to chase fighters, they, they've got all. You know, sure. You've got to go to them, they don't want to chase me, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it fell to pieces. But then Billy Joe was out there and he had a sad call and Jimmy knows I can handle it. So he said, come out for it. So we went out there and when you meet people properly face to face, they see I was a straight person, you know, I've been a good goer. And they said, look, you know, we want to give you a chance, we're going to give you a few dates. And they give me five dates or something along the lines. They've said, look, have a couple of, because I've been out for a long time, they said, have a couple of warms in, you know. If yeah. I can get five, I know I'm five wins on speed, not a problem. There's no one with, if I was the injury free yeah. and get five wins, then I'm in the mix. They are, I have to be in the mix, you know what I'm saying? Sure. And I am, you see a lot of these fighters who, who, who keep saying they want to fight this person, they, they don't want to fight. Boxing is, is, is a mad game. You get all these people, they get on a computer and say, oh, I'm this and I'll do that. But when it comes down, they blame money. They blame, oh, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? I don't want to fight because I don't want to be, it's good. are you better than me or am I better than you? They you want to prove yourself, don't you? Yeah. You want to get money, you want to get a bit of dough out of it, but yeah. let's see who's the best. Yeah. If, if you get beat me, I'll say, well done, son, you beat me, I'm going to go do something else in my life now. But I know, them fights all around there, you know what I mean? You said you've been out for a while, mate. So, are you with a promotion company? Do you have a priority? Right, oh, only verbal. I spoke to uh, MTK, they said, look, it's all ticket deals, you know what I mean? I'm not a great ticket seller, but I'm a good ticket seller. I can make sure we, we cover the cost, they're going to get it, though. Yeah. But I know, after two or three fights, I'm training well, I'm going to stay injury free. Good. Oh, look good, that's a fact. I'm gonna look good. And they'll say, look, he can do something, you know what I mean? And they've got all the like people, well, most of them, they all sign with MGM, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the little stupid people, they know good fighters have got to fight good fighters. That's how it is, we're all in the mix. I've said, to them, I'm afraid to go to Birmingham or Manchester. Anyway, yeah, I'm of course. Mind, you know what I'm saying? I'm not getting a bit of compromise that everyone's paid for. Yeah, I'll go, 100%, you know what I mean? And I don't mind. It's not a personal thing, it's yeah. I want to get to the number, I want to get that bronze down belt around me. At least you know you're going to get quality sparring. One of the questions um, when you mentioned about you and Billy, because you're both Southpaw, obviously yeah. I've seen Billy in action, but... Um, it's, not it's not the girlfriend, is it? No. <laughs> um, how easy or difficult is it for you as a light middleweight mate getting, you know, sort of good opposition? Because Southpaw, Southpaw, you know, can be a bit difficult to spot. As, as an opponent. As an opponent, see. Um, I mean, at the minute, we, I've left all that to, 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 to MTK. They're going to find an opponent. Yeah. Know, we ain't looking to go get number one and let's have a go. We want someone to bring me back. You know what I mean? Cause it's all right being the Jimmy and Pads of sparring. When yeah. that guy comes off with the little gloves on, there's people screaming, you get in the shops. 
you know what I mean, you know you need one or two fights just to get back that feel. And that's what we're going to do, we're going to have a few fights to get back the feel, do some rounds, and then we're going to start knocking off fighters, you know what I mean, start local, start saying the ones who think they're doing the same, start knocking them off. If yeah. you can't get past them, then it's, it's going over, you know, start knocking them off, and they've got all the good fighters, and a they want to fight, I want to fight, it's correct. You know? A potential fight in your division, you know, the two Liams, um, could Who's be, fight? yeah, it could be for the world title if yeah. Canelo vacates. Right. How do you see that one going? Man? That's a tough one because you've got you've got Liam, you've got Liam Smith, okay, who's a, this and they're both good fighters. Yes. You know what I mean? He's been a world champion. All right, he's had a good run to be a world champion, but he's a good fighter. Yeah. And he's good. Listen, all right, he got well one side against Canelo, but he took him eight rounds and he didn't give in. No, he, he didn't. He dug him in. You know what I mean? And Canelo had to come out first gear, had to go whack round the body to steady him up. You know, so he's a yeah. good fighter. When you're mixing it. Canelo's on a pound for pound. He's, he's an elite fighter. He's an elite fighter. When you're yeah. giving him not trouble, but making him do something, you know, then you ain't a bad fighter, then you're a good fighter. He's yeah. experienced. Liam Williams is going to be a good fighter. He's a good fighter now, don't get me wrong, but he's going to be special. He's only a kid. He's 20, 23, 24, you know what I'm saying? Very powerful, very strong. Um, I think maybe Smith might just pick him with experience, you know, because it's all right, it's all right beating your British levels and that. When you start mixing with Wells and things change and that, Definitely. You know, a little bit of pressure to make things differently. I think maybe Smith might just edge him, but it's a good toss up. It's going to be a good fight as well. And he's, and he's been in the big occasions, hasn't he? You don't get any bigger than he's fighting to, Canelo. He's gone to America, fought one of the greatest, do you know what I mean? Exactly. And, and, and he didn't take a backward step, he dug in there. Most fighters would have been sick for him, shot and said that, but he kept it off the floor, dug in, so he's got that bit of cream. It's going to be a good fight. Mate, good fight. just quickly, in two part question. Um, when you were growing up, mm. who were your idols? And um, out of the current crop, what are the sort of the fighters you like? And do you do you keep do you keep looking at the? Yeah, um, I, I, when, I, when I was growing up, I mean, I looked at fighters around my era. Now I'm older, I yeah. like to look at all the, all the old fights. You know what I mean? All, all, all the fabulous Ford, Duran, Leonard, and all them. Oh, and yeah, yeah. And Pernod Whitaker. I love that's. If that's your trade, you've got to look at the other greats. You know? sure. When I was growing up, my man was Joe Calzaghi. He's one of those unrated British fighters of all time. Joe Calzaghi is a legend. Special. He's special. You know? he was. He's got the credit deserved. He's special. I like to beat the old Watkins and the old Jones and that, but he was still old himself. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? He was still yeah. old himself. He's old man himself. Yeah. And he beat everyone. And when he got, remember when he got Charlie Mitchell and he got chinned on and he got on the floor and the other man, he got up and he wobbled again. And he, the same way, and dug in and that was I remember shows. a lot of people actually thought, well, you know, people knew he could box and special mm -hmm. talent. There was many people who thought he would lose to Jeff Lacey. And he, so he gave him a boxing, he him boxing a box. lesson. Jeff Lacey, Jeff Lacey, I think, person was overall, I sort of found out that night. But then if you look, let's say Kessler. He beat Kessler when Kessler was a fresh, young, animal fighter. Yeah. And he beat him and beat him at his own game. You know yes. what I mean? And all right, a frosh has beat Kessler and that, but he's talking about an old, an old Kessler. Not the young Dane come over here yep. to upset the apple car. Joe Cow was having an underrated fighter. He was my idol when I was growing up. I always wanted to be like the Southpaw, but we've got a different sort of thing. I, I like a good counter punch. Joe Cow was having an overwhelming with punches. And his fitness, yes. you know what I mean? Many people say he was slack, but I wouldn't want to slap with him. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. Me neither. So, so out of the current um, proper fighters, who would, you, who, who would you say is probably mainly pound, pound, pound for pound number one? Well, we're talking, well, we're talking the British yours. Global. Global. Well, there's only one man. I don't know, Glockkin is an animal, you know what I mean? I think he's his age or something. You can't, he gets hit in the face, straight in the face, he doesn't mark up. He yeah. doesn't wobble, he doesn't do the back of the step, this is every fight's easy. And no matter who he fights, when he does get them eventually, they all bust. And he, he, he's busted some good, strong, hard fights, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The most middleweight would struggle with him, and he just fucking walks through them. Yes. But then you've got Lomachenko, who he's, he, he makes time and speed look mental. Yeah. You've got the Cuban. Um, Rigo. You know what I mean? Another one, another. And, I don't know how old he is, I think he's well into his 30s. Yeah, he's yeah. fresh. Like he's 30, 36, isn't he? He's yeah, fresh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because he's only had about, he's probably only had a few, more, a few more fights than you. He has, yeah, <laughs> but he's a, you know what I'm saying? It just shows you, if you do live clean, you don't get too much, and, and you know you can, you can go on in this sport. Very quickly, I'm going to mention, even though he's had a couple of years out, I believe because of contractual disputes, mm. Mike, Mikey Garcia, and he's back, isn't he? Because he won yeah, the world yeah, title on the weekend. Right, he looks yeah, the three-weight yeah, world champion. Yeah. He, he's got a, 
he's no slick star, he's no elusive genius, but he can bang, you know yeah. what I'm saying? With them kind of fighters, one punch can change the whole game, you know what I'm saying? That's right. If you don't put it over, he's going to definitely rumble you and make you think, am I doing it? You know what I mean? It's, it's a bit of a different game. You know? That's no, right. No, can't. Got outboxed completely. Yeah. And then crash. You can't crash. Be a great fight. And he is a great fighter, mate. Can't be some constant number one great fight, great fight. You know, young man. He's yeah. A few world champion. Hopefully this year, yeah, mate. Most we'll fighters, they get knocked out heavy. They ain't the same. And he keeps coming back. Keep yeah. digging in. You know, underrated fight. I'm a British underrated fight. Fair play for that, isn't it, mate? Yeah. Um, mate, before we uh, wrap up very quickly, yeah. what's your plans for 2017? Right, I've been. I've got for the first time. I'm looking at a whole year, I've got dates consistently, which I've never had before okay. as a professional, so that's a, that's, a, that's a good plus, you know. Yes. I mean, we all know Jimmy and, 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 and Joe are quite ways now, so not that Jimmy ever, never ever looked me for Joe or anything like that, but I do get a lot more, not a lot more time with Jimmy now, because he's got more time, simple as that, True. so that's another plus, and I, I feel... For the last two years, now into injury, not fighting, no money, I always wanted to keep going in boxing. But there was times, I never lost love of it. I think, ah, it's, it's time now for it to go, you know, because I ain't going to nothing out of it. I'm yeah. hurting body and that. But when I go to the gym now, I'm excited to get in the gym and, and, and listen to Jimmy Tibbs and what he says and that. So I've got I've, the fire, I've never left, but it's raging now. Good. You know, and I want it to happen. So I've got, five, I've got five fights this year, maybe a few more if we can slip them in. Uh, we're going to slowly climb the ladder. And 2017, at the end of it, this beginning of 2017, no one really knows unless you're in the boxing world who for eternity. So just, might, just for the views, do you have, w w when's your first date this year? 17th of March. 17th of March. Brentwood Yeah, that's the one. It's okay. A good build. MTK London's the first one. It's a good build, it's a good name for it. And they match up people quite tough, so you're not going to get the one sided pushovers. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll get one. But, uh, so, yeah, no. no, no. <laughs> You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're doing a good thing. So they've got five dates. They've said to me, you know what I mean? If we're long before, you can be on them all. We're going to slowly creep up. I'm afraid to fight no one, you know what I mean? I'll, uh, I'll never make excuses at all. If you beat me, you beat me because you're better than me. Simple as that. If I've got you, good stuff. yeah, that's what it is. But I'll go in there knowing about him. Like Chris, I knew my knee was in a bad way. Shouldn't really fall. But we fight as we fight. As absolutely. Is, you know, absolutely. In there. He didn't beat me at boxing, he beat me with injury, but he still beat me. That, Good right? stuff, and, and well, yeah. fair play for saying that, mate. Huh? Listen, um, have a, I'm wishing you all the best for 2017. Yeah, hopefully, this is the um, one. Hopefully, we won't get any traffic now leaving. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? Too many cars on the road. Before Nissan, you take the mint, stop making them. Everyone lives stop. in Romford, I don't know what's going on. But, mate, listen, seriously, have a great 2017, and we'll catch up soon. Much, yeah. Take care, mate. Over the end of the year, we'll do another one, and we can, we can do the same. 100%, mate. Oh, take right. care, bud. Listen, fuck up.